Hi everybody, it's Scott here and welcome to the the next part of this video on setting up our rapid fire pickups. So in the previous video we set up our health pickups which give the player health. If I just click on my player we can see now he has six health and if I pick up this item we can um, see that we have this rapid fire set true. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set up the, the game or our script so that whenever this value goes to true that we will change our um, our rapid fire to change the fire rate of our uh, player. So we're just going to go into use script, control and U. And we're just going to look at our script here. This is the this is the player script. So make sure you double click inside your player script. And at the very top we have the spawn prefab. And what this is doing is it's saying if the fire button is being held down, then it's going to spawn a prefab every 0.2 seconds. And you remember way back to when we'd done this, we set up a integer or a float, sorry, called fire rate. And um, the way, because we set this, um, we gave it a name, is because we can actually change our fire rate over time. And this was done purposely for this, um, for this part of the tutorial or the lesson. So what we're going to do is we're going to have, we're going to start off with a global update function. Uh, so just going to type in global update. And on this global update, what we want to do is we want to compare a boolean. And the boolean is going to be our rapid fire. So every frame it's going to compare to see if rapid fire is turned off or if it's turned on. If it's false, it's not going to do anything. Our fire rate's not going to change. However, if it is on, then we're going to simply change the the um, fire rate. So, I'm just going to copy this boolean and plug that in. So, if this is false, it does nothing. However, if we pick up the the fire pickup, and this will then be set to true. So, we're going to fire signal off here. And what we want to do is we just want to set a float like so. So set a float. I'm going to plug that into true. And we are just going to copy and paste this. And the float we want to set, or the target, is actually our fire rate. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it, and paste it twice. So we want to change what our fire rate is if we go to true. And to make this fire really, really quickly, and we're going to choose something lower than 0 0.2. So we're going to try 0 0.05. That's going to be very quick. Um, and if it is false, any time that this boolean does go false, i.e. at the start, then just make sure that fire rate is set to 0 0.2. Okay, that's like a bit of a, a safeguard. So every frame or every tick of our player, we're comparing to see if fire rate is turned off or on. If it's off, it's setting the fire rate to 0 0.2, which is the spawn rate. Um, however, if we pick up a fire pickup, <laughs> I'm confusing you with words here, um, then we are setting the, the fire rate to 0 0.05, which means that we are on a fire very, very quickly. So let's give that a try. File and save. Okay. And hit play. So at the moment, we're just firing at our normal fire rate. However, now if we pick this up, rapid fire is set to on, and now we have a crazy uh, machine gun fire, which is extremely quick. And you will be sure to kill anyone in your path. Like so, very, very quickly, very easily. And that's great, that works for the pickup. However, you'll now notice that we need to turn this off at some point. So this is where it gets tricky. And we're gonna go back into use script, and I'm gonna show you one way that you may be thinking that's quite easy. So what we could have is after we set the float, we could just put in a simple delay. Um, don't worry about following this because this is actually the wrong way to do it. We could put in a simple five second delay and then set the, the boolean back to false. So it sets our fire rate back to 0 0.2. However, the problem is delay does not work when you're using the global update function. The reason being is because global update will fire this signal across every um, frame, so 60 times a second. So that basically will make delay keep restarting and restarting. So you can't actually use delay inside a global update. So what we need to do is we actually need to build our own timer function that will actually work for global update. And we do this through something called uh, delta time. 
So I'm going to show you how this works. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to type in get delta time. Delta time is pretty much a conversion between uh, frame rate and seconds, real life uh, time. So it will convert um, how many frames you have into a, a time value. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to add a variable, a float, uh, called zero. We're just going to put that in there and we're just going to wire those up. Now, what we're also going to do is we're going to copy this set float, paste it. We're going to plug that in there. And we're going to set this value to zero. And we're going to add another float. This may be, this will be confusing at the start what I'm doing, but I will explain it when we have it finished. When we have this float created, I'm going to give it a name called time. This is like an empty timer. I'm going to plug that in. So whenever it's false, it's setting this timer to zero. Whenever our Boolean is set on, after we set our fire rate, we then want to start a timer. And the best way to do that is just by adding floats. So we're just going to type in add float, like so. And what we want to do is we want to add our current delta time. So as soon as this turns on, this delta timer is going to turn, is going to go on. And this is going to basically add this zero. It's going to add it by time. And it's going to result in that as well. So as soon as this turns on, this is going to start ticking up and up and up and up every time a frame goes. However, it's converting it into delta time, which means that um, as we're playing and this is turned true, this will start going one, two, three, four, five in terms of seconds rather than frames. If we just hit add float without the delta time, this would be going up 60 times a second. So if you had two seconds, this would be 120. However, after two seconds, on global update this will be two. Um, so this is basically the time since this has been set to true. If it's set to false our timer will go back to zero. Now what we want to do is after maybe about 10 seconds we want to set our fire rate or our rapid fire on back to false. So the easiest way to do this is to compare a float. Oops. I'm going to compare float plug that in. And what we want to do is we want to take our time. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it. We're going to take our current time, which will start off at zero. And we want to say if it's greater than B, B is going to be set to 10. So if it's greater than 10, then we simply just want to set our Boolean back to false. And the Boolean is, of course, this guy. So I'm just going to save that and explain it again once more because it is a very tricky uh, method. So at the start of the game, when our player starts, we have this um, every frame. We're checking to see if rapid fire is turned on. If it's not, well then it's going to set our fire rate to 0 0.2. It's also going to keep our timer to zero so that this timer is not ticking. However, whenever we pick up the rapid fire, this is going to flick over to true it's going to set our fire rate to 0 0.5, so it means that this is going to be spawning much faster when we're holding down our space key. As soon as that happens, we're getting this delta time value, and then we're just adding that per tick. But, uh, so it's going up 60 times per second. However, because we're using delta time, um, it's converting those frames into actual time values. So what's happening is every second that passes um, through, this, um, through these nodes, this is counting up one two, three, four, five. Um, whenever it reaches, uh, sorry, uh, whenever it reaches 10, it's going to take that time and compare it. And if it goes over 10, so basically after 10 seconds, when this is sent to true, it's then going to turn it back off. Okay. To make this a bit easier for you to understand, I'm just going to turn on time and click expose to unity. Make sure that they're all exposed. File and save. I'm going to wait for that to compile and then I'm going to click on X. There we go. I'm going to select my player and we don't have the exposed variable. Two seconds. 
I seem to have a little error here in my code. Sorry about that, guys. Just run into a small issue there. I just had to go into time and turn that off for some reason, some strange bug. Um, so yeah, file and save will rebuild your, uh, will compile. If you did run into errors there, just make sure that guy's turned off and then hit file and rebuild all, just in case you run into uh, some errors there. So unfortunately I can't get that to show, but what's gonna happen is I'm just going to move that across. And just move this. I'm just gonna have this little timer here so you can see the time. So I'm gonna hit play. Currently we're in the game and if we pick this up, we now um, can fire really, really quick. Can't actually see the timer go up, but after 10 seconds, it's gonna turn itself back off again, like so. So that is our timer now working. Um, because delay does not work with the, the updated events. Very curious to see why this exposed unity does not seem to work. Expose the unity and file save. Bit of a strange issue. So I'm gonna have to take or keep that off, I'm afraid. Um, file and save. So as soon as this goes to true, it is gonna do a timer going one, two, three, four, rather than going um, 60 times a second. Okay, so in the next video, we're then going to, in fact, just before we do the next video, we're now just going to set these up as prefabs. So we're going to select health pickup and we're going to go into our resources folder and we're just going to drag these in. So drag in health pickup into resources, not into materials, but resources. So this is now a prefab and I'm going to select my rapid fire pickup and bring that in as well as a resource. So, or as a prefab. So these are now prefabs and we can now, uh, we can now delete these like so. And then in the next video, we will set up our random spawner of these objects. Again, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.